got using social media with hard to reach groups. BME, rural young people, young people with disabilities, deaf young people, fantastic. Safeguarding in social media, wide age range, 10 to 26, minefield. <laughs> Sorry. Um, any other suggestions? Come on, Don't be shy. Um, how do you balance social media with face to face contact? Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Like that one. Next. Hand Good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, I'd be really interested if anybody was um, using social media for um, campaigning and advocacy. Yeah. Just to try and hear some ideas about that. Okay, campaigning. <laughs> <laughs> Big voice back here. Yeah. Um, is social media making people isolated or inclusive? Because People seem to be more isolated now that there's social media because just contact people through Facebook and YouTube or Twitter. But then also it could be including people because of the different groups there are that people could join and meet new people as well. So yeah. it's a good debate on that somewhere. Okay, so social media and peer relationships. Mm -hmm. okay. cool. I'm so glad it's not all focused on safety. Not that safety is really important. So when we first did them for the first two years, we had they were like, oh, um, that's really good. Any more for any more uh, debates? What about making some mandatory training for when you've worked this and social workers go through that training um, around e safety and things like that? Because you've got a lot of youth practitioners who don't necessarily want to adjust to this new social media. Mm. And I think that's kind of blocking what we're trying to do. Yeah, it's about how do you promote social media within youth work practice? Yeah. yeah. Could that be tied in with sort of digital literacy and innovation yeah, as well? Definitely. Yeah. And um, Sangeet, by the way, is from Wales and she's an expert in internet safety and um, does a huge amount of ex really, really good work in Wales and across the country and is like a guru in all things internet safety and new hot things. So it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so go talk to her, she's fab. And also network while you're here. There's lots of interesting people here, so don't get shy. Um, we have two more slots. If there are any discussions, if there isn't, that's fine. It's hot in Yes. One, one would be um, a investment of resources. How, what's appropriate when you're looking at developing social media? Good. How many people yeah. should you be employing? What more yeah. time does it take? Because too many of these initiatives either don't have enough resources behind them yeah. or become wasteful because there's too much. And I think these are really good to have some recommendations and suggestions for that to put into, and the tools as well, good one as well. Because we can put that into the briefing report. Because I want to, I want to also send the briefing report to Nominate Trust, Unlimited, and some of the big funding organisations as well. Anything from the Hong Kong delegation? Sorry. What? Anything from Hong Kong? If you want to suggest anything, <coughs> you would like. Because you've been looking at a lot about doing online counselling for social media. So I don't know if you want to have that as a topic or do something differently. Mm, maybe what you're saying. Uh, the tech groups can be launched on the Facebook group or MSN group because uh, we're wondering that its online group can be uh, useful for the youth. Yeah. Just looking at therapeutic interventional support through social media platforms because there's a massive, massive ethical debate about is it appropriate, is it secure, confidentiality, who owns the data. You can download the information but obviously there's all these considerations but you can create the secure websites which are absolutely you know fantastic do everything but young people aren't there because they don't know it's there it's how do you cross that bridge okay that's it we're sorted